Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be finding out which primer is going to be the best for MDF and wood. Let's get into it. Going into this video, I have been using the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer pretty much exclusively for the last two years or so, based on a recommendation from a friend. Now, I never did my own research into which primer would be the best. I never did my own testing until now. I have lined up eight different primers that I could buy locally. So I got some at Home Depot, I got some at Lowe's, I did check around other art supply stores and Michaels and Hobby Lobby, and they still carried some of the same brands as Home Depot or Lowe's. So that's primarily where I looked. Now, this is all that I could find in town for me. There may have been more at a different store across town, but for my immediate vicinity, these are all of the primers that I could purchase. With that in mind, it was about maybe $100 or so after taxes and whatnot to buy all of the primers. So I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a like and subscribe to the channel so I can do more videos like this and do more testing. So for this test, we're going to walk through eight different primers. We have the Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer. We have Valspar Bonding Primer. I have Kills. I have Color Max from Krylon, 2X from Rust-Oleum. I have the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer, the Zinzer 123 Primer, and last but not least is actually more of a sealant than a primer, but we have Shellac. So those are all of the ones that I'm going to be covering in this video. When I get to the painting portion, I'm going to be using the same gloss spray paint for everything to make this as consistent as possible. All sanding is going to be done with new pieces of sandpaper so that debris doesn't carry over from one piece to another. Comment down below which primer you think is going to be the best one for MDF and wood. All of the test pieces for this are laser cut MDF, that is about a five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch square. I am not going to sand this before I prime it because I don't want to sand it before I prime it. I want to be able to take it off the laser and immediately prime it and not have to worry about it. With that in mind, I will tell you that one of these three is the best, one is in the middle, and one is the worst. Now, I'm sure that's already surprising to some of you based on the three that I chose. Let's get started with the test. All right, so first up, I have the Zinsser Shellac. So one important thing I wanna mention here is all of these cans are brand new. They have never been sprayed. This is going to be the first time. And I am shaking them all for the recommended time on the label. If it doesn't have one, I match one of the other ones, which is usually about one to two minutes. Next up is the Zinzer 123 primer. Next up, we have the Kills Original. Next up, we have the Valspar Bonding Primer. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum 2X Primer. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum Bonding Primer.
And last up, I have the Krylon Color Max Primer. It's been a couple days since I sprayed all of these, so I'm going to go through and show you what each one looks like before I sand it. Uh, and kind of just go over how well it coated without any post-processing whatsoever. Alright, so first up I have the shellac one. So here, uh, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't really coat anything other than seal it. So this one's more of a sealer, not necessarily a primer uh, that's going to coat anything. So the laser cut edges are still going to be black. It is nice and smooth right now without any sanding, uh, but that's what that one looks like. Next up is the kills. So on this one, did kind of coat the edges. You can still see a little bit of black behind it with just one coat. Um, it's having trouble focusing on it. The main surface is completely coated and it's fairly smooth. Uh, without any sanding as well. On the surface, it's not going to be able to show it on camera, but you can see like the MDF surface through it. So you can kind of see the texture of the MDF. But overall, it had a pretty good coating. Next up is the Universal Bonding Primer. So on this one, I actually had trouble getting it to spray correctly, uh, as you probably saw. So this one does have a raised texture to it. I don't know that it's going to focus in enough to see it. Instead of being smooth, it's actually kind of rough. Uh, and I think it's mainly because it's not necessarily the best primer for MDF. So for this one, I'm not a big fan of how it turned out. Some of the edges that are laser cut still show black through them. Uh, but if you run your hand across it like this, you can kind of hear how rough it really is. Um, we'll, once I sand it down, we'll see how this turns out. But so far, uh, I don't think this one's going to be in the running, but we'll find out. Next up is my go-to right now, which is the filler primer. So this one, as expected, uh, you can see a little bit of black on the laser cut edge with just one coat. It might be hard to focus. The main surface is now gray. You can see the texture as well on this one, but I know that once this sands out, it'll be nice and smooth. So it is a little bit rougher than the Kills was, uh, but we'll see how this one turns out when we paint it. Next, we have the Color Max Primer. So this one didn't really coat the laser cut edges at all. So as you can see here, you can still see the black through it uh, pretty much completely. So this one, you also see the texture of the MDF. It is going to be white, so painting over it with white probably won't be a big issue. This one's basically like a standard baseline primer. I'm not the biggest fan so far, but we'll see what it does with the paint. Next up, I have the Rust-Oleum 2X Primer. This one looks a lot like the Krylon Color Max, so I still see black on all the edges with one coat. I can still see black all the way through. Uh, same kind of texture look. I don't know if this will focus, but same kind of texture look, same color. It, those two, to me, look almost identical. Next up, we have the Zinzer 123. So this one, you can see it starting to coat the edges with one coat. You can still see some black through it. The surface is fairly smooth. It kind of reminds me of a filler primer just in white instead. And it reminds me of the kills too, uh, to be honest. So we'll see how this one does with paint. And last up, I have the Valspar. So this one looks a lot like the Zinzer 123. You can see a little bit of black on the edges if this ever focuses. It may not focus. Um, 
but it looks a lot like the Zinzer one does. Uh, fairly smooth, uh, but once we sand it down, we'll see what happens. So first I'm going to go through and sand all of these. Then I'm going to go through and paint them with a gloss 2X Rust-Oleum spray paint. The reason I chose this one is for a couple of reasons. Gloss usually gives me the most problems when it comes to the final finish and any kind of cracking, uh, that kind of situation. Uh, it's also typically the hardest one to get a good finish on for me. And it sprays just a little bit differently than satin or matte. Uh, and I feel like this is the one that's going to make problems stand out. Now, that may not be the case, but uh, I felt that this would be the best one for me because I also recently had issues with a Gloss 2X brand one uh, that started to spiderweb crack. So this is the one I'm going to use. Now, because I'm spraying all of them with the same exact paint, I should get a good indication of which primer should be the best uh, once I go through that process. So first up, I'm going to sand these. I'm just gonna skip it for you guys uh, because it's gonna be boring to watch. And then we will paint these up. I went ahead and sanded everything with 320 grit sandpaper. I don't actually remember what I said I was gonna use, um, but there you go, 320. So I used the same piece of sanding paper, uh, just cut it into strips and used a new strip on every single piece so that there's no influence from one primer to another. When I go to paint these, because it's going to be the same paint for all of them, I'm going to go ahead and paint them on the same board so that I can try to do it in one shot, nice, easy, smooth, uh, and try to make it as consistent as possible. So with that in mind, let's head out and paint these up. It's been a couple days and the first coat of the paint is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand them lightly with individual pieces of sandpaper so that one paint doesn't influence the other. Going to do it very lightly so it doesn't make it too rough, just to knock down all of the high spots and little things that have happened, whether from just particulates in the air or outside when I've painted it, uh, whatever it may be. So I'm gonna go through and sand each one of these and then paint them again. I finally finished painting all of them with enough coats to coat everything uh, and have left them for a few days to dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and cover what I think is the best from a result standpoint. Now, remember that there were eight total primers to start with and I tried to make all of the conditions the same for all of them. I sanded them the exact same way, the same grit of sandpaper, new sandpaper for each one. I did new cans of primer and new can of paint for all of them as well. The way I did the test was just about the most controlled that I can do it within my environment. Now keep in mind that here where I am in Vegas right now, uh, it is fairly warm. So the temperature range was within the range of the spray paint. Now, if you're outside of the temperature range, you may have problems, but just keep in mind that the results I'm about to go over are my opinion of what I experienced under my conditions in my environment. So with that in mind, I'm going to start at the worst one, in my opinion, and work my way to the ones that I thought were the best. Coming in at number eight is the Rust-Oleum Bonding Primer. So. The reason that this one is number eight for me is a few reasons. So I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera very well, 
Okay, for me, because I am laser cutting things, I need to be able to cover laser cut edges at times. So in this case, I can see some of the black laser cut edge through the paint on this side. Uh, actually, on all of the sides, really. So that's number one reason why it's last. Number two, when I sprayed it, as you saw earlier, it kind of sprayed inconsistently. And on top of that, it sprayed out really rough because it's kind of a weird formula where it's supposed to bond to different things. And, and it says bonds to any surface, but I feel like this is made more for metal. But here in this corner and actually the whole lower half, there's even though I sanded this completely smooth and painted over it multiple times, you can still see there's some surface roughness that's visible, which I can't have. So you'll see as I shine it in the light, there's some rough patches in some spots and some smooth patches up at the top. But this issue here, I can't have this. So this is the reason why this one is the bottom. So this one may be better for different materials, but as far as the MDF goes, uh, I would not recommend using this one at all. Coming in at number seven is the Krylon Color Max Primer. To be honest, I'm not really surprised. I expected this one and the Rust-Oleum 2X Primer to be pretty similar. And in fact, that one is number six. So this one for me, Part of it's the same things. So the laser cut edges, they did cover to a point on most sides, but a couple sides there were little patches where black still shines through. And if it's not going to do it consistently over all of them, then that's gonna be a problem for me as well. If it only coats three sides, but not the fourth, that's a problem. The other thing that I noticed is even with the same drying conditions and everything else. I don't know if this will show up on camera, but let me try to hit the light here. You can kind of see it over here where it's got this little, almost like an ocean shore. So here we go. When I shine it in this light, you can see that going down this edge, there's that little ripple all the way down. And this is not going to be acceptable. This isn't going to lead to a clean finish. Now you can probably get by with it uh, in most cases, but I personally would not let this out the door. And if you look at the light shining in the corners, you'll see it's also at the top and there's a little bit over here, but it goes all the way around the perimeter. You could say that something like this may be attributed to curing time or whatever it may be. But keep in mind that I let every single one of these cure the exact same amount of time before I painted them again or even sprayed the paint on the first time. Even if cure time was a factor, that means that this one, when it came to the cure time and how it behaved with this primer interaction is not going to be sufficient for me. And as I already mentioned, number six is the Rust-Oleum 2X Primer. So to be honest, you could probably flip flop six and seven. The 2X primer and the Color Max primer are fairly similar with how they turned out. The only difference really for me that made the Rust-Oleum go to number six is the laser cut edges are all actually coated. So it does have coating on every part of the edges and the same issue happened here. If I can get the light to hit it right, you can see that ripple effect. So when the light hits it, you can see this kind of ocean shore ripple look in the same type of spots where it goes down the sides, pretty much all the way at the edges. So this could have been the same kind of thing as the Color Max, where maybe it was a curing issue. But like I said before, it had the same curing conditions as the rest of the primers. So to me, under the conditions, this one also would not be good enough for what I'm doing. If that's all you have, 
around you, you can get by with it, but I personally wouldn't use that one either. Number five, which actually isn't really a primer as much as it is a sealer, is shellac. So when I first started, I started with shellac. Uh, it's really good at sealing the MDF so that your paint will go on top of it and not try to soak in to the MDF. So that part's really nice. Now, the issue I have with shellac is this one. The laser cut edges are visible. So you can see black through the blue and it's because those edges never get covered up in the first place, they just get sealed. Now, when it comes to the surface finish, it is almost perfect. So the surface finish is about as good as you can get to a point. There's only one small little blemish over on one side. So it is possible that you can get a clean finish uh, from this, but it's gonna be really hard to cover up those edges. So this one had a better surface finish than the Rust-Oleum 2X and the Krylon Color Max, which is why this one came in at number five. Number four is the Kills. So this one was good on the edges so it did coat all of the edges it's not showing any laser cut marks on any of them so this one is actually really good for that uh, the only real issue i had with this one is on the surface and this probably isn't even going to show up on camera uh, unless the light hits it very cleanly but in this little corner here and it's, like I said, it's gonna be hard to see. The surface finish is not quite as good as the rest of the piece. Now, this could have been that maybe there was an issue with the paint when it got to that spot. Uh, but overall, you can't really go wrong with this one. So the top four on, in this test are all good. The, any one of them would be a good one to use for MDF. Uh, but for me personally, that's my only issue. The, the edges on some of the top three are actually coated better, uh, which is why they rank higher. But this one is still a good one. If you do like kills, it's a good one to go with. Number three is the Zinzer Bullseye 123. So this one, uh, same kind of deal. It, it did coat the edges better. So it does have full coverage on the laser cut edges. So I only see the color. I don't see any of the black, which is really nice to have. This one does rank above kills because there is still a little bit of surface blemish, which is definitely not gonna show up on camera. It's really only visible uh, in person, but a little bit on the edge. There's just a little spot that isn't quite as good as the rest. And this could have been due to sanding or any number of things. But overall, this one looks really good. And same thing. If you like this one, stick with it. It's a good one to use. But... For me, um, just because of those surface blemishes I'm seeing, I know that I have better results uh, with the top two. It's still a good one to go with, so if you like it, keep using it. And then two and one are honestly, both are almost identical looking, uh, which I even wrote on the back of here. It could be one or two. So the top two are the Valspar Bonding Primer and the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. So ultimately, uh, these two worked the best for me. And when you're doing this stuff, I mean, it kind of comes down to price partially. But another key characteristic of these two is one is gray and one is going to be white. So if you are spray painting with white paint, 
Uh, I might lean towards the Valspar because it's already white and it's going to be easier to get a white finish uh, on a white primer. Now, if you're using white and you're using the filler primer, it can take one or two more coats sometimes, depending on any issues, uh, to cover up all of the gray. So this one, honestly, I think I'm gonna use both. So these two are, in my mind, the best two primers that you can use for MDF or wood. And it's a really close call. So I started with filler primer a couple years ago based on a recommendation from somebody. And both of these do something really nice, which is they will fill in voids and help smooth out your piece. So when you sand it down, it's nice and smooth and there's no little dimples or anything. Some of the other ones have problems with this, but these two were really good for that as well as the Zenzer 123. With that in mind, uh, the only issue I had was my own hair got stuck in one of them. Other than particulates that you can't control landing on your paint job, these two are near flawless, in my opinion. When I'm talking about the edges, which this top one is the Valspar, and this one is the filler primer. So when I'm talking about the edges, they're almost identical. It's even hard to tell. Uh, which one is which, and I keep mixing them up because I don't know. But it covers all the edges, so if you want it to cover laser cut edges, it does a really good job. I will say that the ballast bar might actually take a little bit of an edge when it comes to covering the edges of this, uh, mainly because the ballast bar, without really thinking about it, coated all of the edges perfectly. Uh, the Rust-Oleum, I know that I kind of missed a little bit on one of the edges, so it's not as good. Uh, but without really thinking about it, the Valspar did it really well. When it comes to surface finish, there aren't really any blemishes. So this one is the filler primer. So other than my fingerprints being on it from holding it and messing with it, um, I can wipe this off and it's fine. The surface finish of the actual paint is almost glass-like, which is perfect. And honestly, any issue with the surface of this one is now down to the paint just being the wrong paint. The Valspar is also just about flawless, other than my fingerprints being on it. And normally I would coat this with a clear coat, and you won't even see that. So after many hours of testing and trying out eight different primers that I could find, these two are the two that I would recommend. So if you're going with a lighter color spray paint, so say like white or maybe a lime green or a yellow, I would probably go with the Valspar. If you're going with a darker color, such as black or dark blue or purple, whatever it may be, Either one will do the job. So if you're only gonna buy one, I would buy the Valspar, mainly because it's easier to cover the white than it is to cover gray. So if you're using dark colors or you don't really care if you have to do one extra coat of a lighter color to cover the gray, the filler primer still does a really good job. So in my opinion, one of these two is your go-to. Pick one of these, I think you'll be happy with them. Now, keep in mind that this will go hand in hand with your paint. So in a future video, I am going to actually use uh, probably the Valspar primer with a white spray paint as well as a blue spray paint for different spray paint brands to try and figure out which pairing works the best. Now, I may throw the filler primer in too, but I'm definitely going to use the Valspar because I'm gonna to try to use white, and I wanna use a white primer for that. So for me, the top three are going to be the Valspar in spot number one, the Rust-Oleum filler primer in spot number two, and the Zinzer 123 in spot number three. Hopefully the information in this video was helpful. 
Uh, it did take a while to make and it cost quite a bit just to do all the primers uh, because I went and bought them all from the store. So I think I spent maybe $100 or so after tax on just primer for the video. So it would mean a lot to me if you gave the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share this kind of information along the way. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.